Okay, thank you and good morning once again to everyone. Thank you very much for joining us on this uh, tutorial um, that we organized as the Zimbabwe Stock Exchange, as which will exchange, mainly focus on the key features of the ZSC Direct. Confirm if I'm still audible. You are. Thank you very much for the confirmation. So my name is Tapio Bepe and I'm going to be the moderator uh, for this uh, webinar. And uh, thank you once again uh, for coming through. So maybe just a few housekeeping rules um, as we begin the, the tutorial. Uh, when you enter, if you can just kindly mute your mics, um, I think it will also be good not to have feedback as the presenter is presenting. And then um, to save on data, if you can kindly turn off our videos, except for the presenter, um, he can or she can turn on their videos. And then during the presentation, for any questions that you might have, uh, kindly make use of the chat box. We will then uh, go through all the questions uh, once the presentation is done in case it is not um, answered during the presentation. So maybe just a bit of a, a background on the platform that we developed at the, as the Zimbabwe Stock Exchange, which is ZSC Direct. Uh, we launched this last year in September 2020. And um, this feature or this product is mainly for the individual and the retail investor we saw it fit to be able to come up with such a service that speaks to the retail investor to make it in a way so that everyone even a first-time investor can come through and also participate on the stock market we did a survey last year uh, early last year whereby we actually found out from the survey that people are scared to come to the market because they think that is for the sophisticated investors and uh, an ordinary person uh, does not uh, is not supposed to be coming on the market, which is what we try to demystify as the Zimbabwe Stock Exchange. And then some of the results were that um, people do not even know the investment process. How do they go about it? So we then came up with this product as a way of uh, um, speaking to the retail investor and as a way of actually coming through as an additional platform that one can access. So some of the key features that are found um, on ZSC Direct, which we will dwell into as the presentation goes, um, is that we developed in a way that it's user friendly for a first time person that comes through, they're able to come through and be able to easily navigate through the platform and then we also have a key feature which is the portfolio holdings it also be uh, touched on during the presentation so that you know what it means uh, when you see that you've got a portfolio the calculations the gain on uh, the gain or loss as well and then as uh, ZSE direct clients we recently started sending you market statistics um, so that it helps you track the performance of the market. So we'll dwell a bit into that on some of the key things that you are supposed to take note of for, so, for those emails that come through and how you can use that to actually track the performance of your, whole, of your portfolio. And then we also have a key feature, which is the market depth feature. Uh, we'll dwell into that uh, as a live tutorial on what happens, why uh, it is important, how you can then best use it to execute your orders when you come through. And then we also have the price range. Um, in the stock market, we've got circuit breakers. We'll uh, dwell more on that as well too, so that you get a bit of understanding what the, sec break, what the circuit breakers are when you're inputting your bid price or ask price, the range that you're supposed to put uh, if you want your order to be executed. So in a summary, uh, that is the, um, uh, the key features that we will touch on during the webinar. Um, and it will be explained in detail with the presenters that are coming through. So allow me uh, to present our uh, to, to for me to introduce our first presenter, uh, who is Edim Tami. Uh, he's from the Zimbabwe Stock Exchange. He's in our trading department. So he will touch more on um, the circuit breakers and also the market statistics um, and the, your portfolio. So over to you, Eddie. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Tapua. Good morning, everyone. I hope you can all hear me. Yes, Eddie, confirmed we can hear you. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome once again. Uh, so my presentation, uh, let me 
share and please confirm with me whether you can see my screen. Can you see my screen now? Yes, Eddie, we can see it. OK, uh, thank you very much. So uh, my presentation is going to touch on three key features as highlighted by my colleague Tapiwa. So I'll start to explain on the my portfolio feature, and then I'll explain on the circuit breakers, and then I'll also touch on the market states, the ones that we send on a daily basis. So to begin with, um, my portfolio feature. So the my portfolio feature is a feature that is found on the ZSC Direct. Uh, maybe as a definition to 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 to, to a layman, uh, a portfolio generally it's a it's a collection of uh, financial investments like stocks, bonds, commodities, cash or cash equivalents, or even your ETFs or exchange traded funds. So it's a collection of whatever financial assets or financial investments that you hold as an investor. So as the ZSE, we saw it very important and pertinent that we, we, we disclose or we, we give investors on our platform a, a feature that discloses or that shows a list of all investments or rather stocks that the investor holds. So on our my portfolio feature on the ZSC Direct, uh, we do have the section for indices, it shows so the section for equities, it shows you the list of all equities or the ordinary shares that you have. And we also have the section for ETFs. It also shows you the number of ETFs that you have on the market. So basically how this, uh, my portfolio feature uh, works is that the idea is to show you the gain or loss that you would have encountered after having invested on a stock market. So you will notice uh, on my presentation, I hope you can see clearly uh, on the right side of this uh, window that in, on, on this window, I have got uh, a portfolio which is showing Econet, Simbisa and Cassava. Please confirm if you can see this. Yes, Eddie, we can see it. You can go ahead. Thank you so much. So on this window, you can see that I do have uh, a list of three counters. That's Econet, Simbisa and Cassava. So the, my portfolio feature, it gives me the number of shares that I have that is under the column of holdings here. So on Econet, I do have 100. On Simbisa, I've got 100 shares. And on Cassava, I've got 600 shares. So how this feature works is it calculates the gain or loss that an investor would have made on this particular day. In so doing, it, it, it compares today's price, which is which, which we've uh, called the current value versus the previous day value. So Sorry, Ed, it, um, can you just put it in a presentation slideshow uh, so that it's a bit more visible with the feedback that we've just given? Okay, not a problem, noted. Confirm if you can see. Yes, it's better now. Thank you. You can go ahead. It's better now. Okay. Oh, you can press S5. Yeah, it's better now. It's better now. Okay, thank you. So the, so the idea here uh, is to show you, number one, the, the number of shares that you hold, the types of shares that you hold, and also it shows you the overall gain or loss that you would have made on a particular day. So as you can see, I have got there is a summary now on the bottom here. There's a summary of the listed portfolio investment that I have. In this instance, I've got three. That's Econet, Simbisa, and Cassava. And then it also shows me uh, the portfolio valuation. So the portfolio valuation is, is based on the current value of, my, uh, of my, my, my equities. And then it shows me the gain or loss. The gain or loss in this instance is actually showing as of today compared to yesterday. 
So basically, this is uh, uh, my portfolio feature on the ZAC Direct. It's more of a summary of what I have in terms of holdings and the movements that I have in terms of the valuations of uh, my portfolio. I do hope that uh, that was set forward. Uh, let me move on to the next slide. Uh, the next aspect, which is uh, quite very important, uh, that is covered in my presentation, is the aspect of uh, circuit breakers. So circuit breakers, uh, these are measures that we put in place uh, in order to control excessive share price movements on the market. The idea here is to avoid uh, extreme volatility on the market and also it's a mechanism to, to, to avoid a price manipulation. So as the Zimbabwe Stock Exchange, we have got uh, circuit breakers in place and these are uh, electronically configured and they, they are applied at a rate of 20%. So to say 20% up or down from the previous traded price. So I have put in an example here to say if you if you are trading, say, on XYZ Public Limited, right? And then yesterday, it closed at a price of $10. What it means is the maximum... Hi, Eddie. I think we've lost you. You've lost... Okay. Confirm if you can hear me. I can hear you, Eddie. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Thanks. Okay. Oh, so I can proceed? Yeah. Yes, you can proceed. Okay, thank you. So, uh, like I was saying, uh, the idea of circuit breakers is to ensure that we do not have excessive price movements on the market. So, I was given an example of, say, uh, XYZ pub, uh, Public Limited share price, it closed at 10 yesterday. That was its closing price. So, the maximum tradable price in today's session will be 12. That is to say, 20% up, and then the minimum tradable price will be eight to say 20% down. In another words, we are saying uh, you cannot put a price that is above 20%. The system will automatically classify that trade as rejected. So if I, if I put a trade, for example, on XYZ, which has closed yesterday at $10, if I put a price at $13, you will notice that I'll get a rejection because it is beyond the second breaker limits that the ZSE is actually put in place. And the, on the other hand, on the other side of the coin, if I put a price of $7, it will, it will also be rejected because of the limits that have been put in place. The idea, like I said, is to prevent market holes, is to prevent market crashes, and also to minimize the risk of market manipulations and protect our investors on the platform. So you will notice that also, even when you put your, under the time and force feature, when you put your good two cancelled, and uh, you say you put your good two cancelled, uh, maybe I put an order today, and then I say, uh, it has to be valid in the system for the next 16 days or 20 days. And then I put a price of say, uh, maybe $11 today. So if XYZ price moves from $10 to $12, my, my order will still be valid. But if XYZ moves from $10 to $15, my GTC, regardless of it, having been specified to be in the system for the next 16 days, it will automatically be rejected because it would have fallen out of the range of circuit breakers. So it is very important and paramount that you always take note and keep track of your GTC orders, the ones that we call the good two cancelled, to not, to not whether or not they are still valid within the circuit breaker, breaker ranges so that you not lose out in, on the uh, time priority of your, of your order. So basically this is what uh, the ZSE circuit breaker um, feature is all about. So it's all about number one, protecting you. Number two, we also try to avoid the unnecessary uh, market volatility. We also in the process avoid market holes 
in the process, we are protecting you, the investors. So it's a non-market feature, and it's also a non-market rule under the circuit breakers. Uh, thank you. So uh, allow me to move on to the next slide, which will touch on the next aspect of my uh, presentation, which is the market states. So uh, I think uh, over the past one month or so, you have noticed that we have made a, a significant effort to communicate with the market, particularly our retail investors, so that you are in picture of your investments. So we have put in a significant effort to send market data on a daily basis. So I'm sure if your email is uh, on the mailing list of the market data that we send, I'm sure you must be receiving our price sheets, uh, which we have got two price sheets. We have got the one for equities, we have got the one for ETFs, and we are also sending out um, the market commentary. So as part of my presentation, I'm also go going to help you to understand what the price sheet is and what the price sheet for equities and ETFs is all about. I'll also help you to understand and interpret what in, what's a market commentary. So uh, allow me to present to you my price sheet for the equities and begin to describe what it is all about. Confirm if you can see my screen for the price sheet. Uh, no, we can't. Okay, uh, not a problem. It's loading. It's all right, that's fine. Confirm if you can see. Yes, it's visible. Yes, we can now see. Thanks, Eddie. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. So, um, in terms of the market state that we send you as I have highlighted, this is the what we call the official list or the price sheet. So, this is the price sheet for equities. So, um, maybe as a background, uh, the ZSE has got uh, different classes of securities that are listed on the market. So, we have got equities or your ordinary shares. And we also have got exchange traded funds, and we also have got the bonds. But unfortunately, all the bonds that were listed have actually matured or expired. So unfortunately, we have got nothing to share in that regard. So as of today, I'll only share the prices for equities and the ETFs and educate on what these prices are all about. So you will notice that uh, the price that we send you on a daily basis, it contains uh, on the first column, which is uh, column D, I think. Uh, it, it lists all the equities, uh, all the shares, or the, the companies which have got equities which are trading on the market. So on, on this column D here, you can see they are actually arranged in alphabetical order from AFDIS down to, down to Zimri Holdings. So this shows you the list of all active counters which are on the Zimbabwe Stock Exchange which any investor can partake or can buy or sell shares in. The, the price sheet also shows you the, what we call the ISING, the International uh, Standard Identification Number. This is a unique number that you can use or that you can input even on your Google to search a particular securities. So it's an internationally recognized number. So the price sheet also uh, displays you the ISING of the, of, 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 of the listed counters. So our price sheet also has got a column which shows you what we call the year high. So this year high, it's, uh, it's, it's showing the highest traded price on this counter during this particular year. So in this, on this price sheet, as you can see where I've put in, in that sale, uh, in sale L17, I violated the highest price for AFDIS. So what my price sheet is telling me is in the year of 2021, AFDIS recorded a highest price of $51. This is RTGS. The next column is the year low. It's showing me that in the year of 2021, the AFDIS recorded a lowest price of $20 RTGS. 
So this is very important, even if you would love to analyze uh, the, the, the performance of counters on a, on, on a yearly basis, you can request uh, maybe a price sheet for 2020, the price sheet for the 31st of December, it will show you the highest and the lowest for each and every counter which is listed or which is active in that particular year. It shows you, okay, ah, it had this lowest price, it is this highest price. The next column, it shows you the, uh, the previous closing price. So the, pre the previous closing price, this is the price at which the, uh, the counter closed the session for yesterday. So you must also note on this one, uh, before you go further, that uh, ZSE, in terms of uh, international pricing conventions, it makes use of what we call the volume weighted average price. I'm sure most of you who have had the privilege of going through the stock market information, you will understand that there's a last transaction price convention, there's also the auction price convention, and then there's the volume weighted average price convention. So in our instance as the ZSC, we make use of the volume weighted average price. So how we derive at the <laughs> volume weighted... Yes, is that a comment? Um, it's not a comment, Ed. you can go ahead. Let me mute the person. All right, uh, thank you, uh, Tapio. So in terms of the pricing convention uh, that we use at the Zimbabwe Stock Exchange, which is the volume weighted average price, what we do is after each and every trading session, we weight the price and the volumes of uh, what would have traded in the market. For example, the example that I've given you earlier on, on my on my second breaker uh, presentation, where I said that XYZ closed at $10 and the maximum tradable is 12 and the minimum tradable is eight. What it means is investors can put any price as long as it is within that band. So I can put a price of seven, I, sorry, I can put a price of nine, which is between eight and 12. I can put a price of 11. I can put a price of 11.5. There can be any price within eight and 12. That is the 20% up or down of the 10% of the previous stated price. So at the end of each trading session now, we wait those prices. So the simple formula to come to the volume weighted average price, which we use is simply the traded value, uh, total traded value on a particular counter divided by right. the total volumes traded. So Sorry about that, Ed, you can go on. His mic is muted. Okay, thank you. Uh, can you now hear me? Yes, you can. Oh. Sorry about that. No, that's that, that's all right. So, uh, the previous closing price, as I was saying, it shows you the yesterday's price. So, even on the um, my portfolio feature, the one that we we're referring to as the yesterday's price, which will be compared to current price is this one on the price sheet here. So your, my portfolio feature will extract this previous closing price and compares it to the current price to ascertain the gain or loss on your holdings. So the next, uh, the next item on my price, which is on column V, is the opening price. So the opening price is the price is the first traded price in a particular counter within a particular trading session. Uh, maybe as a background, let me highlight to you that we, we have got what we call the, the trading sessions. So the trading sessions, they begin with what we call the pre-opening session. So the pre-opening session is primarily designed for uh, price discovery. And then we have got what we call the continuous session and we've got what we call the post-close session. So the continuous session now is when 
the meshing, the actual meshing and continuous order input is taking place. So this opening price here that you are seeing on my price sheet is the first, is the first trade to have taken place on a particular counter. So you will notice that in many instances, in many instances, not all, but in many instances, the open price is always the same with the previous closing price. However, there are situations whereby the opening price will be different from the previous closing price. And the situations are that during the uh, pre-opening session, when there is a trade or, or when there is a buy and a sell order, which are ready to match in the continuous session at a price which is different from the previous closing price, that will be the one allocated as the opening price. So you notice that it may be different from the closing price, but it's, it's, in, it's in rare instances, but it actually do happen. Because we have had queries whereby people were querying, how come the opening price is different from the closing price? It actually, it's a, it's a, it's a natural phenomenon in the instance of the circumstances that I have explained. So the price sheet also shows uh, what we call the last transaction price. I think is as the name itself explains, the last transaction price is the price of the last trade on a particular counter. So after all the trades they have gone through, the trades that will go last, it will be reflected on the price sheet. The idea here is simply to show the, 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 the price movement trend on a particular counter. And then the next, uh, the, ne the next item or the next column on my uh, price sheet is what we call the closing price. So this closing price, also note that it is also the volume weighted average price. So this is what will be more of a reference price. If somebody is quoting a price of Ariston, is quoting a price of Avdis or Insco, or even wherever you hear that Kafka closed at 120, Axia closed at $16, they'll be making use of this column A, B here, because this is what is the official reference price from the ZSE perspective. So going back also to my earlier presentation where I was talking about the, my portfolio, this closing price is what will be compared to this previous closing price here to ascertain your day's gain or loss thereby it computes your, your portfolio gain or loss. And then the next item is the price change. As the name says, this is simple. This one, it compares, it compares the closing price and the previous closing pr price in absolute terms. So you will notice that on, on, on my presentation here, uh, I've disclosed it uh, for 1.65. And then yesterday it was at 41.625. So in absolute terms, it moved up by $0.0250. Uh, and then it also shows you the percentage uh, movement, the percentage price change. I hope this is, this is clear. And then the next aspect on the price sheet is what we call the total trade count. Uh, the total trade count is simply the total number of trades that would have occurred on that particular counter in that particular trading session. So as you can see on my uh, presentation here, it's telling me that of this only recorded one trade on the 14th of April, 2021. It's also showing me that uh, Ariston had 24 trades, et cetera, et cetera. And then the total trading vo traded volume is, the, I think that is straightforward. This is the total number of shares traded on a particular counter in that particular trading session. And then finally, the total traded value. So the total traded value is in monetary terms now, the value that we have traded on the particular counter. So the price, it also, it, it summarizes, it summarizes the totals of uh, activities on the market. So it gives you the total volumes traded on all the counters that you've traded in today's trading station. It also gives you the total value traded in that particular trading session. So I think basically that's just about it in terms of uh, the ZSE official list or the ZSE price sheet as it relates to equities. So allow me uh, to proceed to the next price sheet, which is the price sheet for the exchange traded funds.
Confirm if you can still hear me. Yes, we can. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, kindly confirm again if you can see my my price sheet for the ETF or the exchange traded fund. Seems to be loading. Okay, thank you. Confirm if you can see. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much. So uh, in terms of uh, the price sheet, I think the structure of the price sheet generally uh, is the same. If you can look even in terms of uh, the, 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 the headings of the columns there, the structure is generally the same. However, uh, this one is for the exchange traded funds. I'm sure you, you are aware through our various notices, our various platforms that we have launched a new product called the exchange traded fund. So in the exchange traded fund is more like a, a security which will be list, listed on a stock exchange and it tracks the performance of a particular uh, asset or commodity or whatever it can be. In this instance on the ZSE, we have got a security called Old Mutual ZSE Top 10 ETF. So the ZSE Top 10 ETF is uh, tracking the performance of the Top 10 index, the ZSE Top 10 index. So in terms of this price sheet, it shows you uh, as highlighted before, the structure is literally the same. The company name, we only have got one ETF so far, the eyes in, the year high. So it's telling us that after its listing uh, uh, in, in January 2021, the highest traded price on the ETF was 2.16 and the lowest traded price was uh, $1. I think this was also the price at which it was listed at. So in, on the 14th, the previous closing price was dollar 7304 the opening price was also the same and then it closed at one dollar 75 cents closing price change and the percentage change and there were a total of four trades on this counter the volume stated were 2300 and also the total uh, value was 4000 on the etf i think this is fairly straightforward especially on the fact that it is more or less the same with um, with the equities the only difference is that it is actually showing you the characters of a different security, which is the ETF. All right, thank you. Uh, let me go on to the next, uh, the next and the final uh, uh, market uh, market information that we sent to you, which is what we call the the the, the, the market commentary. Confirm if you can see my screen. All right, loading. Thank you. How oh, about now? Yes, yes, it's now visible. Thank you very much. Uh, so the market commentary, which I, we will receive on a daily basis. So what it is showing you here is more like a highlight of uh, the overall market performance. So I'm sure if you are very particular about business news, I think which you do, you will notice that every other business news, they will have tickers uh, rolling down your screens of market indices. Uh, you have got you know, the international platform, you've got your FTSE 100, you have got your DAX, you have got your S&P 500, et cetera, et cetera. So the ZSE also has got uh, uh, its indices, um, which are also uh, an important feature of uh, uh, market information. Maybe as a background, uh, an index is generally an indicator of uh, price movements. Uh, it shows you how the general price movements of classes of assets within a particular cluster have actually uh, occurred. So in our instance at the ZSE, we have got a total of uh, 15 indices, um, and on our market commentary, we only circulate these ones that you are seeing on my screen here. So let me rush to explain the OSHA. The OSHA index is generally uh, the benchmark index of the Zimbabwe Stock Exchange. It shows you the general price movement 
the general share price movements of all shares which are listed on the stock market or on the ZSE. So this is our benchmark index. So uh, as you can see here on my screen, uh, it, it, it is telling me that it closed at 4160.12 on the 14th of April. This is the, the closing uh, position of the index and it compares to yesterday's, the previous one. So as you can see, it is in red. It is, the, so what it is telling me just by a general pictorial view of these numbers to say all share index percentage change was minus 0.8%. What it is telling me is that the general price movements of all shares on the ZSE has gone down by 0.86%. But that is not to say that every counter has lost. It is only telling you that when we put the overall weight of all the counters which are on the ZSE, the, the, the overall market is lost by 0.86% on that particular trading session. So you also notice also that the market commentary displays to you the top 10 index, the top 15 index. So the top 10 index and the top 15 index, uh, they track the performance of the bet, the top 10. Top 10, top 10 companies by market cap. So at each and every quarter end, we actually rank our securities by market capitalization and we rank them in order of highest to lowest. The ones that will be the top 10 will qualify as the constituencies into the top 10 index. And the ones of the top 15 will qualify into the uh, top 15 index. And we also have got the small cap, which is tracking the movement of uh, uh, share prices in the category of what we call the small caps. And then we've got the mid cap and the mining cap. So the mid cap is the next share, is the next companies after the top 10. The next 30 companies after the top 10, they are what we call the mid cap. And the rest, they are what we call the small cap. We also have got an index that tracks the performance of mining companies on the uh, stock exchange. So after we have given you this pictorial view, we will also give you the top five gainers and the top five losers in that particular trading session that would have contributed to the movement of a particular index in question. So uh, basically, uh, that's just about it in terms of uh, the market states that we, we send you. So uh, let me uh, give this time back to, to Tapio. I think my presentation is done just about for now. Um, thank you very much, Eddie. Uh, I think we learned a lot from, from your presentation. I'm just going through the chat to see if there are any questions. Um, I noted that most of them were a matter of just asking to be added to the mailing list. For those that do not send their emails on the chat, you can just send an email with the request if you are not currently on the mailing list to ZSE direct at zse.co.zw. I also type in uh, that email. I don't know if there are any peop um, people that have caught questions directly to what Eddie has presented um, before we give the slot to the next presenter. You can just raise your hand if you've got a question for Eddie. Okay, there's another question about how long it takes for me to see my shares in my portfolio. That is going to be addressed in the next uh, presentation where we are dwelling on as uh, the ZSE direct uh, features. Okay, I see a rand from Emmanuel. Emmanuel, can you kindly unmute your mic and you can ask your question. All right, uh, good morning. Thank you for the uh, beautiful opportunity and the great project. Um, but my question is, I think it's more of a question or uh, a request. Like, our, as far as the price uh, price sheet is concerned, um, or the ticker, as the speaker was uh, referring to, can we have uh, the pricing updated within, like, the spreadsheet, like, how it was, like, before the update? Because right now, I have, for me to see the price, I have to, like, uh, look at the scrolling ticker on at the top of the page as compared to just seeing it as a full spreadsheet.
Hi, Emmanuel. So this request is on the ZSC Direct platform. Yes. Oh, okay. That is the request on the ZSC Direct platform. That's fine, Emmanuel. I think we can uh, take this online. Uh, let's have a chat uh, after the meeting, and then we can see how best we can assist each other on the request that you've said. Yeah, because uh, as of now, it's really difficult for for me. I don't know about other people to just get the the actual pricing on the date. You know. Yeah. Okay, I think we've noted that. Uh, thanks, Emmanuel. William, you also have raised your hand. Kindly unmute your mic. Yes, I have a question with regards to the price sheet. How you obtain? How do you obtain your market capitalization column? All right. Uh, could I respond? You can go ahead, Eddie. Okay. Uh, thank you, Tapio. Uh, thank you very much for for the question. Yeah. So basically, uh, if you notice that uh, the price sheet. It's showing you, I think, the summary in terms of the prices and the volume traded and then the total value traded. So our market capitalization is simply, uh, the formula is we multiply the listed shares multiplied by the share price. So you notice that from the price sheet, the only thing that we extract when we compute our market capitalization is the column for closing price because that is the that is what we will use we will only use the shares which are listed on that particular counter multiplied by the current price or the share price on that particular day in question so from the price perspective we only make use of the closing price uh, column which we extract the price for computation of the market cap okay thank you very much Eddie William I confirm you you have been answered. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, Takunda, uh, you can go ahead and mute and ask a question. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, I just wanted to ask a question to the presenter. Um, on his uh, one of his slides, he showed uh, the closing points. So I was always curious as to how those closing points are calculated or computed uh, for the for the top ten as well as the mid caps or, or or even the all share. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you, Takunda. Uh, that's quite an interesting question. Thank you very much for for that question. So yeah, uh, how we compute uh, an index, just like your normal index that you hear, even in terms of inflation, your consumer price index and everything, how we compute our indices is we start on a ba on a particular basis point. So in our instance as the ZSE, our all share, our top 10 and all our sectorial indices, we started at a base of 100 in the year of 2018 January. So what the method that we use on the ZSE is the market uh, market capitalization method. So we comp the indices, they will be uh, actually tracking the movement on the market cap. Remember, uh, based on the question that William asked, he asked about the market cap. So a market cap is a composition of shares traded, uh, so shares listed multiplied by the share price. So the share price is the moving component that will take into account when you compute the index. So it's more like a, a, a market weighted, market capitalization weighted index. So we compare the, the movement of the market capitalization from yesterday to today, multiplied by the base, which is yesterday's. And then we get the gain or the loss on the index. So in, in our instance, our benchmark indices in all our sectorial indices, they have been um, uh, constructed with effect from uh, 1 January 2018 at a basis of 100 basis points. So when you look at them at 4,000, what it is literally telling you is that there was a serious 
benefit or gain or money made on the OSHA between January 2018 and uh, April 2021. Because it's, it's, it's a pictorial uh, representation of a movement from 100 basis points to 4,000 basis points. And the method is market weighted capitalization. I hope I have answered you, Taku. Thank you very much, Eddie. I think he, you have answered it well. Uh, thank you very much, Eddie, for the insightful presentation. Allow me to move on to the next part of the presentation uh, where we will tackle some of the questions that you've been asking about the cell process on ZSC Direct. Uh, let me introduce uh, Maria, uh, who will take you through the presentation. Some of you might have interacted with Maria in your um, through email. Uh, so she's going to take us through the tutorial um, on some of the uh, questions that we might have and some of the key features that we talked about. Over to you, Maria. Um, thank you very much, Tapiwa. Maybe if everyone can confirm if they can hear me so I can begin. Yes, confirmed. Yeah. Um, thank you, Eddie, for the presentation. I will go ahead and present my screen. Maybe just a reminder to the delegates that if you can just kindly uh, mute your mic, mics, it will definitely help. I'm trying to mute uh, those that would have unmuted, but let's just try to have our mic uh, muted whilst the presenter is doing the presentation. Thank you. Maria, you can go ahead. Okay, sure, in a minute. Hi, Maria, if you're talking, you are on mute. Um, no, Tipe, I haven't started just a second. I'm just sharing my, I'm trying to share my screen. Sorry. Okay. We were, it was now visible from our end. Oh, you could see the slides clearly. Yes, yes. Oh, thank you. Let me reshare. I can't see it. Now it's not visible, but as she was going through the visible, I think she's resharing her screen right now. Maybe now you can confirm. Yes, confirmed. You can go ahead. Um, my presentation will mainly focus on um, the most frequently asked questions, how to... Can you still see my screen? No, it is disappeared. Okay, let me try and share again.
It's now visible, Maria. You can proceed. OK, thank you. So my presentation will focus mainly on the frequently asked questions. So the most frequently asked questions include what are the prerequisites? What do I need in order to be able to register for an account? Um, where can I register? Do I need to first contact a stockbroker? How do I select the best broker for me? Um, what is the minimum initial investment required to register on the platform? Um, does this automatically mean that I become a shareholder? And some of them will also come as, can I use um, C Trade and ZSC Direct at the same time? Can I transfer my portfolio from C Trade onto ZSE Direct? And um, why do I need a CSD number? And how do I get to know more about dividends, AGMs, and shares? So um, the first aspect that I'll touch on is um, opening an account. <laughs> There's some feedback somewhere. Please mute your mic, Frank. Thank you. Um, so the first um, aspect that I'm going to touch on is on opening an account. How do you open an account? What are the prerequisites um, or the requirements that you need to open an account? So first and foremost, one has to be 18 years and above. Um, because the legal age in Zimbabwe is 18, so you must be 18 years and above to register on ZSE Direct. But even if you're under 18, you can still participate on the stock market, but you'd have to go through a registered stock broker. And then the second um, prerequisite would be um, you need to have a national ID or its equivalent, which can be your national passport. Um, that can be used as an alternative to your national ID. And what we require on the platform is a picture of your national ID or a picture of your passport. And then we also, for now, ZSC Direct is only open to Zimbabweans. So you need to be a Zimbabwean resident and have a proof of residence um, that clearly states um, that the reg that clearly states your registered name and as it appears on your national ID or bank and also confirms that this is where you stay. And then you also need to have a valid email address because this is where all the information is sent. You are also required to have a Zimbabwean bank account as the ZSE operates in ZWL. And also you need um, the you need a proof of residence as the Zimbabwean address that you'd have provided will be verified um, through the proof of residence, which can be in any one of the following forms. It can either be a bank statement um, that shows your name and possibly your address, a letter from your employer um, stating your name and the address that you'd have registered, an affidavit from your landlord um, stating that you actually stay where you would have told it, um, or a lease agreement. You can even use your utility bill, your ZESA bills, your TEL1 bills, ZOL bills, for as long as it states your registered name and the address that you'd have registered for appearing um, on the same document. And then um, you can also get a letter from your councillor or your village head. And um, as highlighted before, the proof of residence provided um, on registration must show your name and address, and it must also be within three months um, from account opening. So say you're registering in April, your um, today's April 15th, so your proof of residence should be maybe from from February to date if you're going to use it to register on the platform. And then after that, um, well, th these are just the registration steps. Um, step one has to do with the general information, your name, date of birth, your surname, all that information. And during the step one, you'd be asked to also create a password and we usually recommend that you create a password that you can remember and um, that that also has unique keys. And then the step two on the registration process um, is selection of a broker. So on this slide, these slides are going to be shared with you after the training. So I've also given a list of the registered brokers that are on ZSC Direct. So this will also help you to make um, an informed decision. And the next slide just covers the website and where you can get information um, with regards to the different brokers. 
So we always encourage investors to do their research first. You can do your research on the internet. You can do your research by asking friends and family. There are a lot of people you can consult in order to make an informed decision as to which broker you'd prefer to use on the platform. And then the step, sorry, this also encompasses step three. Um, so then now the step three and step four um, are uploading a picture of your ID and then uploading a picture of yourself. So these pictures must not be more than two megabytes. If they're more than that, then um, your registration will not go through. And then after completing the registration process, you will receive a verification email that will be sent to the registered email address. This is why an email address is a prerequisite before you register, because this is where all the communication comes to. So if you do not receive the verification email, we usually advise that you check your spam regularly. You also, spend, you also check your junk message. After checking your inbox, you can just check thoroughly through your emails to just see if you haven't received this email. And in the case that you do not receive this verification email or a friend does not receive this, then I've put also our email address, zedesidirect at zedesi.co.zw. You can just email us and we'll be happy to assist. And then um, say that in the event that you're creating your account, you probably put a password. Now you've verified your account. You're supposed to log in and you've forgotten the password. Would suggest that you go and click the forgot password. You go and click the forgot password link that's on our website. And then you go through the necessary steps. And in the event that you discover that you may have made an error when entering the email address or when registering somewhere and you are facing challenges resetting your password or changing the password using the forgot password route, we also encourage that you email um, ZSE direct at zse.co.zw immediately. And then, um, so upon successful login, you see a lot of various tabs or a lot of information on your dashboard. So I'm just going to explain some of the terms that you will see. The first one that we've had inquiries on was what does it mean when it says CSD number request sent? So what it means is when you do your registration process, you select a broker. And when you select that broker upon successful completion of the registration process, a request for creation of a CSD account is then sent automatically to the broker by the system. This is why when you see when you when you log in for the first time, it's reflecting as CSD number request sent. So your broker is now, this means that your broker has received the application and they'll probably go through it to authenticate and approve the KYC that will be provided by the registrant. And then there's the other term CSD number approved. So it changes from request sent to approved. It does not always change um, from approved from request sent to approved. Sometimes it changes from request sent to rejected. I'll just explain the two scenarios. So approved means that you have provided all the necessary KYC that's required on the platform and your broker is happy with the application and you have provided all the necessary information that they can and they've verified it and they've gone through it and they've authenticated this information and it's correct. So now they're going to proceed and create a CSD account for you before they allocate a CSD number to you. So this is what it means when they when it says CSD number approved. Then we come back to a scenario where you then go and you log in and it says CSD number rejected. This means that your application has been rejected because you provided incomplete KYC on the platform. So it might actually mean that probably your date of birth is probably not matching what's on your national ID. Your proof of residence is not showing, in as much as it may be a bank statement, it's not showing your name, it's not showing your address. So you've just put forward a statement and we don't know, can they verify that this is Maria's statement? It doesn't have my name, it doesn't have um, my address. So we usually we encourage clients that when you upload your KYC documents, you upload a proof of residence. You can even check with the selected broker to say, I had uploaded this as my proof of residence. Will it work or do I need to look for 
another document to upload. If it's a confirmation letter from your employer, yes, it's going to state your name and your ID number, but it also needs to state that you reside at this um, certain location that you'd have actually mentioned. And then the My Portfolio was um, covered by my colleague Eddie, who's gone first. And then you see that at the top of your dashboard, um, you see the My Wallet tab, and you also see the Buy tab to the left of your screen and the Sell tab to the left of your screen. Most of these things um, will make sense as I may as I do my presentation and on the platform. And then this um, speaks to the Profile tab. So if you want, to, when you log in, you click on your Profile tab. What is it that you can do? when you log in and you want to make changes to your um, KYC and to your profile. So what the first step that you need to do is to click on the profile tab that's in green, that's on to that's to the left of your screen. I will be doing this um, in the next few minutes um, using my account. So you click on edit profile if you want to make any changes. Um, once you click on edit profile, it would redirect you to a page where all your KYC information is provided. You edit the information that you want to, uh, to edit. And then after you're done, you need to remember to click on the update tab that's in green to save the new changes that you'd have made. To also change the password, I've also highlighted a few things. To change the picture of yourself and also um, the profile picture. In some instances, some people do not upload their pictures. So when you're requested to upload a picture of yourself, if you click on the my on the profile tab in green and you go and look at the to check on the right of your screen, there are two small boxes. There's one to change picture and there's another to change to upload ID. So to change your profile picture, you need to click on the change picture tab and then you select the file and then you click on upload. And then to change your, to upload your ID, you click on the upload ID tab that will be in red. All of this is also highlighted uh, on the PowerPoint. And then now we'll proceed to funding your wallet. Um, most of these things I'll be doing it um, on ZSC Direct in a few minutes. So we have two options that you can use to fund your wallet. We have the EcoCash option. We have the Zim Switch option. And then we will then proceed to the buying and selling of shares. So maybe just a rundown before we go um, and do the actual thing because the market is open. Um, to place a buy order on ZSE Direct, um, you need to do the following things. You need to specify the counter that you want to buy. So you need to select your counter and then you need to select the volume. This is how much, um, specify the volume. This is um, the quantity of shares that you want to buy and then your bid price per share and then you also select your time and force. And then this also speaks to the market depth feature, which I'll also um, illustrate as we'll be placing the orders, the different buy and sell orders. Um, and then these are some of the FAQs. I will just run down through them before we go and place orders. And then maybe you can also type the questions in the comments tab and then we'll attend to them. So most frequently asked questions are, after I place my order, does it mean that the shares are mine? The answer is no, not yet. The order has to be confirmed as a matched order and then wait for settlement. It has settled. Then the holdings will be appearing under your name. And then what does it take for my order to be matched? After you followed all the correct instructions, you find that orders are matched automatically um, in our automated trading system using the price time priority. So um, the orders in the order book, the ones that match first are the ones with the highest bid price and then um, they're compared based on the time that they were entered in the system. And then for some of the questions, it's I bought shares today, I cannot see them anywhere. Um, the settlement cycle on the stock market is T plus three. This means that um, it, the day that you, pay, you buy the holdings is T plus zero. And it, um, it means that the trade will settle in the following three business days. Meaning to say that if I buy my shares today on Thursday, 15 April, the trade is expected to settle on end of day Wednesday, T plus one being Friday, T plus two being Tuesday because Monday is a public holiday, and T plus three being Wednesday. 
And then um, the other question would be how to view my matched orders. I'll also take you through this in the live um, environment. Um, I bought my shares today. Can I sell them before they've settled? You cannot sell shares um, that have not settled. You can only sh sell shares that are appearing under your portfolio. And then this speaks to selling shares on ZSC Direct and then how you can do it. Um, so the other questions that are frequently asked are, I would like to change my broker. How do I go about it? So the first thing, there are two scenarios to this. There's an entirely new investor who's created an account and because of lack of knowledge, they would have probably selected one broker and maybe done their re after doing their research, they, they decide to change um, their broker. This person can go ahead and email ZSE direct at zse.co.cw and then we can assist them. And then there's an event where I have been trading with a certain broker for some time. I have holdings and probably today I've bought some shares. And I think um, off the top of my head to say because my cousin is using broker X, I also want to change to broker X. Um, this process is a unique process and we need to look into it first because um, it means that the holdings that I have under broker X, I cannot view them under the sub account under broker Y, but my shares still exist. So now when I log in and I change to broker Y and they create a dash triple zero two account for me, I cannot see the holdings that I had with broker X. So in order to sell these shares, I would need to still go back to broker X or maybe pay for the share transfer that the shares be transferred from broker X to broker Y. Um, the brokers can also advise on this, um, how their clients can go about the process and they'll also give you feedback on whether it is a good move to make or and how best you can go about it. And then my transaction as a wallet top up is reflecting has failed. What do I need to do next? This one I will cover it as I do my wallet top ups would um, suggest that you also email ZSE direct at zse.co.zw. And then my account has not yet been credited. My transfer is pending or hanging somewhere. Um, you find that sometimes you might go and do your bank transfer to the ZSE direct account and your transfer is not hitting your wallet. This is because you would have not initiated the transaction on the platform. And then for some, it's I cannot find my verification email anywhere in my emails. Um, we've um, I've addressed this earlier on to say you need to email ZSE direct at zse.co.zw. And then what does it mean when I'm asked to initiate a transfer or wallet top up on ZSE direct? Um, some of these things I'm going to address in the next few minutes. What do I do if it says order has not been placed? Contact ZSE direct. And then what do I do if the system says address errors highlighted and place order again? And then I have been waiting for a CSD number for more than a week. What should I do next? My account has been rejected. What is the next step? How do I withdraw funds? How long does it take for withdrawals to hit my bank account? Maybe I'll just also answer this one, uh, even though I'll address it. So withdrawals are always processed as an RTGS transfer and they take up to 72 hours to hit your bank account. And then how do I know which counters to buy? For investment advice, we recommend that you contact your selected stock broker. And then when placing orders on ZSE Direct, do I buy a loan or the broker has to do it? You will have to place your own orders on ZSE Direct. Um, so this marks the end of um, my presentation. I will just, um, I will proceed to, I will proceed to presenting in the live environment. So I'll just log into my ZSE Direct account. Okay, uh, whilst you're doing that, Maria, oh, okay, you're done, it's okay. I wanted to start uh, answering some of the questions that are, okay, so you can go ahead so that at least we can tackle it um, before the market closes. Okay, can everyone see my ZSC direct screen? Yes, we can. Okay, so the, put the profile tab that I covered in my slides, this is my profile tab, sorry, I've been logged in for a long time, so 
OK, so this is my profile tab. You click on it if you want to make any changes. If you want to change photo, you go to the change photo tab in blue. You select your file. You then click on upload. Um, the image that you want to upload um, will be shown on your screen and then you click on submit to submit the picture and change your picture. In the event that you're asked to upload your ID, you click on the I upload ID tab and then it will also redirect you to the page where you choose your file and the picture of your ID will appear and then you also click on submit to submit the ID document and then to make any changes you click on edit profile here and then to also change your password you click on the change password tab in green so first of all when you're allocated a CSD number you go and click on the my wallet tab to top up your wallet because ZSC direct operates on a pre-funding model so you need to fund your wallet first so um, we have two options for now to find your wallet on ZSC Direct. So you can either use the eco cash option. Where you go, you enter the amount, say um, 500 RTGS. Sorry, I'm not going to confirm this transaction, so please pardon me. Um, and then you enter your mobile number. As you're entering your mobile number, please take note. You're going to enter your mobile number without leaving spaces, and you're not going to start with zero or plus two, six, three. And then after doing so, you go, you click on proceed. Once you've clicked on proceed, um, you receive a pop-up message on your phone, um, online merchant transaction of the amount that you'd have initiated the RSI direct is pending, Please confirm by entering PIN. I've clicked on dismiss because I don't want to top up my wallet yet. So you will see that you get feedback on the platform. If it is successful, you also get a notification that the wallet top up has been successful. This is the first way of topping up your wallet. The other option is to use the Zim switch option. Okay. So when you click on Zim switch option, you it will automatically pick up your banking details. And then you enter the amount that you want to top up. So maybe say another 500. So there's an important notice to say, please note that an, uh, an amount of $5, or $5 will be deducted from, your, from the amount that you transfer to cover um, admin um, charges. So you then click on proceed. And then after that, it will redirect you to a page where it says step one, log into your bank platform and do an electronic transfer, zip it or RTGS. And then step two, um, after the transfer has been successful. So before you even go to proceed and do the transfer, just click here and click on done. And then you proceed to go and you then proceed and go and find your wallet using zip it using a zip it option or the rtgs option so you log in if it's bank abc like i use you log into your bank abc platform you do the transfer you transfer the amount to the banking details that were provided on the platform and then after that um the wallet will be funded between five minutes to 24 hours but what we recommend is if the funds do not reflect with within 30 minutes and the market is open, we would also suggest that you can email ZSE direct at zse.co.zw. So now you see that the transaction will, um, is completed. Um, wallet will be funded between five minutes to 24 hours. So now these are my total funds that I can trade. So now I go back to my wallet. And then to just check to see, you see that this is my wallet transaction history onto the left side of my screen. On the 14th of April, I've initiated a bank transfer. So this is what the transaction should look like after you've select, you've clicked on done before you've proceeded to do the zip it or RTGS transfer. And then you find that my EcoCash transfer of 500 is reflecting as failed because I canceled it on my phone. 
and then the rest of the transactions are reflecting as successful because I successfully um, confirmed them and did them through my bank. So now I'm going to click on my dashboard again. And as you can see, this is my portfolio for set um, for orders that I've settled. I will now go ahead and click on buy because the market is open and I want to buy some shares. So to buy, like I explained in the previous slides, you first select your counter. So maybe I want to buy some African sun shares. The market depth feature automatically shows up when you select counter. So the market depth feature, it shows you the seller's price and the seller's volume, which is the ask price and the ask volume. And it also shows you the bid price and the bid volume, which are the buyer's bid prices and the volumes that they want to buy. So what the market depth feature does is it shows you up to 10 of the best orders on the order book. So when you're placing your order now, I want to buy my African Sun shares. And I'm also looking, I'm also guided by my wallet balance. So maybe I want probably 400 African Sun shares. And I'm looking at um, the ask price, which is the seller's price. The seller's price is in a range of 2.1 to 2.3. Um, the bid prices are also in the range of two point, from 2.1 to 2.2. And then now I go back to the price range for that particular counter because it will guide me on the bid price. As you can see, the price range for African Sun as a counter is within um, between 1.486 and, and 2.7696. So I cannot place an order of 2.8 for this particular count because the order will not be accepted by the system. So my bid price will probably be 2. Point, maybe say 2.5 because I also, maybe I also reduce my my quantity because I'm looking at my wallet balance. So my volume maybe will go to 300. And then I'll select the time and force. Um, you can either select a day order, which means that if you select a day order, the order will only remain valid in the system until the market closes. If the order does not match and the market closes, your order automatically expires. And this means that the funds will be re will be reversed back to your wallet and you can place an order again tomorrow. And then a good till cancelled is, va is valid in the system for 30 days. So it can remain in the system for 30 working days and it will only expire after that. So I prefer to select day order because if it doesn't match, then um, I, I can get my funds and then trade again tomorrow. So this is showing me the total cost before charges, which is $675 and it's well within my wallet balance. So now um, it will redirect you to the following page um, because I've selected to buy equity. Um, now it's showing me that for Africa, I've selected my counter African Sun. My bid price is 2.25, the volume is 300. I've selected a day order, the cost, and then the cost after charges, and then the total cost. And then I'm going to confirm. And then I'm looking also at my wallet balance. And then I'm just going to confirm my order. And every time you're placing an order, just check to see the market status, because as you can see now, the market is still open, so I can place my orders. If the market status is closed, the place order or confirm button will not appear. It will only appear when the market is open. It seems to be taking a bit long, but maybe we can wait.
I think whilst wait, let me look at some of the questions. Uh, might be a network issue, but I'll also try from my end if it doesn't go through because I've already logged in. Okay, that's fine. Um... Okay, I think some of the questions were, were being asked in terms of, um, I'd like to confirm if there's any development in place for the ZSC Direct platform to add a feature whereby one sells shares and the money doesn't immediately go to the bank account but credited on the wallet. Okay, so let me take this one. Um, we do acknowledge that um, and we received feedback from, from various investors that it's also uh, costly for the money to then be uh, credited to your bank account. So currently, as the next phase uh, of the platform, uh, we are working on a solution so that when you then sell your 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 shares, the money will be credited back into your wallet. Uh, we will be announcing once all the tests um, have been completed, but it is something that we are currently working on and we do apologize that it has taken longer uh, but i think uh in in some few weeks we will be announcing that platform is now available and then i think i saw a question uh okay there's one just come now at the um, what is the minimum amount to deposit into the wallet so the minimum on the resi direct is 500 Zimbabwean dollars. That is the minimum amount that you can deposit and then you can buy shares on. Because this is a platform for the retail investor, we try to make it as affordable as possible to everyone. That's why it's currently at $500. Then some of these were requests on being added to the uh, mailing list. Okay, and then there's another question in terms of the share prices discrepancy uh, between. OK, let me just answer this and then we'll go back to your presentation, Maria, uh, between ZSE on the ZSE website and ZSE direct website. Um, so currently on the ZSE website, there is um, uh, about 20 seconds delay uh, on the prices, but we are working on a solution so that it is um, automated. Same with the prices on the ZSE website. So just note that the prices on the ZSE direct platform, there is a 20 seconds delay, uh, but we are working on reducing that uh, time frame discre discrepancy. And then how long would wallet funding take place ordinarily via the Zipit Bank? I think Maria highlighted this. We do zip it, but it still takes two days for the funds to move. So as Malia highlighted, in terms of for the zip it transaction, she showed you how uh, one can complete the process. Because at times you know that when people have been doing the zip it, they have not been doing the final confirmation on the platform to show that the zip it has gone through. So in the event that you do a zip it uh, and it's uh, it takes maybe more than 30 minutes and the money is not reflected in your wallet. Please let us know so that we can also uh, assist you, especially when the market is open, because we know that when you do the zip it, you'd want to use those funds to trade. So kindly let us know if that money is not reflected within 30 minutes. We are here to be able to assist you when it comes to those transactions. Uh, you can go on, Maria, and then I will tackle the questions after your presentation. OK, thank you, Tapiwa. Um, so as you can see, my order has been confirmed. Uh, it's just uh, um, that my network is a bit slow. But as you can see on my screen, the order has been successfully placed and it has already matched. How amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so it's no longer a working order. I was hoping I'd show it to you as a working order, but now it moves from working orders to matched orders. So as you can see, under my matched orders, I now have African Sun shares bought on the 15th of April. The price that they matched it was 2.2 and the volume is three, um, 300. So now my total cost is 691.14. So the rest of the balance will be returned back to my account. And then under your canceled or expired orders, um, these are the orders that would have not matched. So you see that on the 7th of April, I placed a day order for art shares and they did not match. So when the market closed, 
the order expired and the funds were returned back to my wallet. So now before the market closes, I will proceed back again to my to my dashboard. And then now because um, the market is still open, I want to sell some RTG shares. So I'll just go ahead and click on sell. And then um, just to note, I cannot sell the ETF because I do not have it. As I, I have some ETF shares, but I cannot sell them if they have not settled. So now I'm going to have to select equity, select counter. Um, as you can see that the only counters that will pop up when you want to sell the equity are the counters that you have. So you cannot sell shares that you do not have or shares that you would have bought but have matched and are pending settlement. So I can't say sell my African Sun shares today. I would have to wait until Thursday morning when the market opens and I can sell them. So as you can see, um, RTG shares, um, the bid price, there's one bid price and there's no seller yet. So the bid price is 2.4 for 300 um, RTG shares. So I will go and select my quantity. I have 600 of these. So maybe I will go and sell 200. And I'll select my offer price. So as the seller, I'm at liberty to put the price that I want for as long as it's within the price range. So because my price range is 1.68 to 2.52, I choose the price range or a bit, an offer price of 2.5. This does not mean that my trade will match at 2.5, but this is just my offer price as the seller. So then again, time and force, I will select day order and then I will proceed to place order. So order and queue, please confirm below to complete order. I will just go ahead and proceed. So I've placed my sell order. Um, order has been successfully placed, but um, the order has not yet matched. It will be updated once a match happens. So now, as you can see, um, different from my buy order, which matched there and then, my sell order is now under my working orders. So this is where it's appearing. So if I want to view the order, I can go and click on view, and then it will show me the whole order, the price that I input, the remaining quantity, the quantity, um, the counter, and then the order number. And that its status is shown there. So I'll just go back to my dashboard again. And then um, as you can see on your portfolio, there's the portfolio for e equity and then the portfolio for the OMTT. I also have a few ETF shares. Um, if I want to dispose those, I can also sell them because uh, but unfortunately I cannot sell my ETF now because it's now 29 minutes to 12. The market for ETFs closes at 11.30 on the dot. So I'm a minute late. I would have to sell them tomorrow. Um, and then to check your working orders, you click on my working orders for buy. You select on view all if you have any um, working orders, any buy working orders. You select on view all if you have any sell orders that are still under your working orders, you select on view all. And it is also advisable that you also continuously check your notifications tab for any notifications from your broker on the platform, any updates and information, it's just advisable that you check um, the information. The last thing that I'd want us to do is um, process the withdrawal. I'll just wait for my computer to keep loading. And then um, once it's done loading, um, I'll take you through how to withdraw funds on the platform. And then also you can also cancel your buy or sell order, but you can only do it before the order has matched. Once an order has matched, you cannot cancel it. If it has matched, you cannot cancel the order and you can also not cancel an order when the market is closed. So you can only cancel your order when the market is open. Say you've placed your GTC today 
and tomorrow you see the counter is probably going down and you're, you've changed your mind. Tomorrow at 9.30, you have to log in and cancel the order. If you do not cancel that order and it matches, you cannot cancel it after it has matched already. And then, um, so I'll just wait for my um, page to load. Okay, whilst you're waiting, um, maybe let me tackle some of the questions in the chat. Uh, from Wilfred, he said that he had sold his stocks last week on the 6th and the money only hit his bank account yesterday. What causes the delay? So the settlement is done by your stockbroker, uh, Wilfred. So what we can do as a DC, we can assist you in making a follow-up um, with your broker. So in the event that you've seen, uh, you've, you've read confirmation that the trade had settled, but the money has not yet hit your account, please get in touch with us and then we'll also make a follow-up on your behalf with your stock broker that we can assist you with. Hi Tepa, maybe just to also highlight on the sell side the settlement cycle is also T plus three. So if you place your sell order on the sixth and it's matched it has to go through the settlement cycle first of the T plus three. So having placed your order on the sixth it means your T plus one will be the seventh. Your T plus two is the eighth your T plus three is the ninth, so it's expected to settle on the ninth. And the funds are processed to your registered bank account for now on the settlement date, which is the ninth. And the payment is processed as an RTGS transfer, which usually, depending on the bank, takes up to 72 hours. And we're, try we're trying to work around this to have the sell proceeds um, credited back into your ZSC direct wallet to just uh, minimize on the time lag that it takes for the money to appear in your wallet um, so that you can also use it to buy more shares and you don't lose out on the stock market. So now I'm just going to take you through how to withdraw your funds from the platform. So to withdraw your funds, you click on my wallet tab and then you click to withdraw funds from your wallet. So as you can see, I have 256 RTGS. Maybe I just want to use my 256 RTGS. So you click on the, sorry, let me take you back a bit. So I'm going to click on the withdrawal request tab in blue here in the center, and then it's going to give me my details, everything. And because maybe I want to use my 100 RTGS, I'm going to withdraw 100 RTGS. And I'm going to click on proceed. So as you can see now on this date, which is 15 April 2021, the amount that I um, requested to withdraw was $100 and there's no comment yet. And um, the status is still, pen is still pending. So once it changes from pending to accepted, done or completed, it means the funds have been processed to my registered bank account. And like I highlighted earlier on, because these payments are done from corporate accounts, the payments can only be processed as RTGS transfers. So if I put if I put forth a requ withdrawal request today on Thursday, 15 April, I anticipate that um, maybe Monday is a, a public holiday. By end of day Wednesday, I should have received the funds. Latest end of day Wednesday, I should have received the funds in my bank ABC account. So the payments depend on the bank. Maybe they might hit my wallet tomorrow. They might hit my wallet on man on Tuesday or even on Wednesday. But if I'm lucky by tomorrow end of day, um, I'll probably have a hundred extra dollars to spend over the holidays. So I think that's mostly about it. I am also free to attend to any questions that you'd like me to attend to. And then always remember to log out once you are done. And it is also not advisable to do what I've done to remember, to click on the remember me. We advise that people do not do that and just keep their accounts private and to themselves only. So I think this that's all from me. Um, if there are any questions, I'm free to take them and maybe, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maria. Uh, much appreciated. I think we can take through some of the questions. Um, 
I know you highlighted this in your presentation. Someone was asking when changing a broker, does one get a new CSD account? I think you talked about those two types of scenarios um, when you were doing your presentation. Yes. And then, yes, thank you. I don't know whether you still want to tackle that or we can move on to the next one. Uh, maybe just to say that the new broker that they would have chosen, will, um, if it's on ZSC Direct, they'll have to go back to the request sent. Because this new broker, like we always highlighted that brokers have different requirements. You find that when you select a broker on the platform, some will require you to complete additional internal compliance forms. Some will process the information provided and probably call you or engage you to to provide some other information that they may require. Um, so you go back to request sent and what the second broker does or the third broker is they will create a sub account for you. So say you have had your CSD account with probably your first broker, which was, um, this is a no particular order. I'm just taking it in the alphabetical order that the brokers come in. So you have your first CSD account with ABC stockbrokers, and now you want to change to um, Acribos. Well, Acribos will now create a sub account for you, which is the dash triple zero two. And maybe whilst on that as well, um, I also maybe forgot to highlight that if there's any change in your KYC information, particularly your banking details, we advise that you also notify us by emailing us at ZSE direct um, at zse.co.zw or you also notify your stockbroker, but it's all, it is very important that after changing details provided on the part, uh, on the platform ZSE direct, it's important that you notify us and then you notify the broker so that when dividends are declared or any changes are made and funds need to be transferred, we do not have an outrage of people saying, but I changed my banking details on the platform. Your broker needs to be well aware. If it's your proof of residence that has changed, if it's any information, it's always wise to request or put forth your um, information so that we forward it to the necessary brokers that they make the necessary changes in the system so that you don't miss out on any important notices or information that may actually um, affect you. Thanks for that, Maria. I think um, just going through the chat, some of the questions, key questions was in terms of the money coming back to ZSC Direct. Um, I think we've well taken note of that feedback and um, we will we will be announcing once that feature is now available uh, on the platform. I think the other question was in terms of can settlement be reduced? I think if you take note that we settlement was actually from T plus five and uh, it's been reduced to T plus three. And we know yeah, yes, that it still needs to be reduced, but we are working with the other uh, capital market stakeholders so that at least at the end of the day, uh, it's for the investor, it's for the benefit of the investor. Um, so that at the end of the day, you get value out of your investment. So yes, we are still trying to work around the settlement cycle being reduced. And then I think there was another question um, in terms of, can I transfer my shares from the C trade to ZSC direct uh, platform? So unfortunately, um, that is not possible at the moment because the model that C trade uses and the model that ZSC direct is currently using are two different uh, models in the sense that uh, with C trade, they use what is called the nominee uh, model, which means that at the depository, one does not actually own their own CSD. It's not uh, in your own name. You don't have a beneficiary CSD account. Whereas with the ZSC direct platform, the model that we took was because we want you to have so ownership of your CSD account. It's the CSD number is actually um, in the individual's name. So that's why you see that uh, you are not able to transfer your portfolio from C trade to ZSE direct. If there are any other questions, please kindly just uh, raise your hand as I'm going through um, some of the questions. If you feel that you've got a burning question that has not been addressed. Yes, Emmanuel. 
Uh, I, I think uh, several people have been raising concerns around uh, issue of withdrawals. Really happy that you're working on with uh, having the sale proceeds go directly back to the ZSC direct account. But then can you also add uh, having the sale proceeds going to EcoCash or any other mobile wallet that you would have used for funding? Um, okay, thanks for that, Emmanuel, for the feedback. And um, from the depository side, um, they accept the bank account. So it's a lobbying that still has to be done at that level. Uh, but we do take note of that. And thank you for the feedback that you've just given us. Uh, Takunda, you had also raised your hand. You can go ahead. All right, thank you so much. Um, I have quite a number of questions. Uh, during the presentation, Maria alluded to the market depth feature on the platform. Uh, she just basically went through it. Uh, if you could just quickly just explain how it works and how someone can interpret it. Second question. She also mentioned the price time priority. Uh, could you just have an explanation on that as well? What that is all about? And my other question, I think you've addressed it pertaining to <coughs> settlement as well as uh, having funds sit in our ZTC direct wallet instead of going to our banks. Uh, the other question that I have is, is it possible if you guys could add a feature on your platform for a pending order for out of hours trading? So for example, uh, not all of us can uh, or have access to uh, be on our on online during trading hours to place a trade. So maybe I want to just place a pending trade after hours when I'm at home. So maybe we can consider having a pending order feature for out of hours trading. Um, I think my other question would be on partial shares um, are we now migrating towards that if not can we please consider that i think that's all back to you chair thanks takunda for the feedback and as well as for your questions um, maria you can go ahead and do the price time priority I will tackle the market depth and um, uh, the other questions that he has highlighted. Um, thank you very much, Tapiwa, and um, thank you for the questions. I think Takunda, if I got your name well. Um, so the price time priority, maybe I'll begin with um, how our trading works. So when you input your order, your order is actually recorded in the central order book. And for matching of orders, it is done through an automated um, trading system that we have as the ZSE. So this system, when it's matching orders, it uses what we call the price time priority. So what um, the price time priority really encompasses around is it looks for the highest price um, so orders will match first according to the highest price. So say the highest price for that particular counter is probably 2.5. The highest bid price that has been put is 2.5. Assuming that this is within the range and there are about 10 people who have been put this bid price of 2.5. And you are seeing this on your market depth feature to say um, these are the seller's prices and these are the bid prices. So it's showing you that maybe about 10 of the best orders have a bid price of 2.5 and you're amongst those 10. So what the system does is when it's matching orders, it looks at the highest price, then it goes back to look at the times that these orders were entered into the system. So say one was entered at 9.30 and maybe yours will not match because you entered it at 11.45. And your argument will come to say maybe I entered the same bid price as the top 10 orders that were there. But what the system does, it, it picks up um, the highest price that's um, been bidded 
and also it uses the time that the order was entered into the order book. So the first order to be entered with the highest price will automatically match if it matches with the sellers, um, if it matches with the price that the off the seller is willing to accept or is offering. Maybe Eddie can also shed some more light if he has um, some more information to add on this. Uh, all right, uh, th thank you, Maria. I think you have um, you have uh, summed it up well. So maybe just to put an emphasis, as the name spells out, it's price time priority. So the idea is you have got your bids, you have got your offers. So the system selects the best bids and the best offers. So when it is the best bids, it looks at the highest price. When it is the best offers, it looks at the lowest price. So you notice that the one with the best price on both the bids and the offers will take the first place. But in the instance that we have got more than one bids or more than one offer with the same price, that's when the time aspect comes in. So first in, we'll get the first place. So as the name speaks, price and priority, price first, and then if we have the same prices, we look at who comes first, we'll get the order in terms of the priority. I think that's just about it. Hi, um, can you hear me? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Tapio. Oh, OK. Yes, Thanks, Maria, for that. Um, let me just tackle the issue of the market depth feature. Uh, so, Takunda, I had, I had put in a video link uh, on, on, on the chat so that at least you can have an appreciation in detail. But in a nutshell, what the market depth feature just does is that it shows you the 10 best orders on both the buy and the sell side uh, when you are inputting your bids. So for example, a best buy is that order which reflects the highest bid price at a particular point in time. And as well as uh, what we call a best uh, sell order is that order which reflects the lowest um, offer price at that particular point in time. So the market depth feature is just there to guide you um, and it helps you to determine the appropriate price for your order compared to the existing orders already in the order book. So you can just have a look at the link that I shared in the uh, in the chat. It will guide you on um, knowing more about the market feature in detail and then how you can actually utilize it if you're placing a buy and a sell order. Uh, I think we have overrun our time. I don't know if there are still um, people who've got burning questions and that they want addressed, but we are always there to um, engage with you outside the webinar. And I see that we've received so many suggestions. So maybe what we'll do as the ZSC is we'll engage you uh, on some of the features that you would want to see that are there on the platform. Because at the end of the day, this platform was made for you. So we really appreciate it when you give us feedback on the key features that help you uh, when you're going through your journey. Um, so we will maybe run a survey on some of the key features that are useful to you 
that you would see fit and then we can as it will help us to progress um on the on the next steps yes we will because it was recording we'll definitely share with you the recording and the presentation um once um at the end of today actually uh, is there anyone who still has a question um before we close off hi tapua um yes maybe just to highlight um on one of the questions that i didn't probably answer um one can use C trade and ZSC direct at the same time. I think it's a question that also came from one of the clients earlier on. Okay. Um, yes, you can open an account with ZSC direct and begin trading with it. It's okay. Thank you for that. So yes, you can use C trade, you can use ZSE, but what is not possible at the moment is to then transfer the holdings uh, from the C trade to the ZSE, but you can still use them concurrently. So allow me to take this opportunity to thank um, all of you participants that came through. Uh, we really appreciate your support, your feedback, and um, we are where we are because of the support that you give us as the Zimbabwe Stock Exchange. And we really appreciate the feedback that you give us to make Sadesi Direct a better product for you. Uh, please feel free to get in touch with us either on our social media platforms or even on the email that we shared earlier on. We are here to engage you. Let me also take this opportunity to thank Maria and Eddie for taking us through uh, the presentation. It was quite insightful. I'm sure we all learned something um, from the presentation that was done by Eddie and Maria. So we will be informing you on the upcoming webinars. We do have monthly webinars whereby they are there to uh, assist you on your investment journey. So we will be informing you on the upcoming webinar that will have uh, one that you can also participate. So have yourself a good day and uh, for the upcoming holiday, I wish you a restful holiday and thank you very much for always supporting um, the Zimbabwe Stock Exchange. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tapio. Yes, guys. Thank you. Cheers, all. Thank, Thank you. you. Good day, everybody. Thank you.